Do you know when, when life gives you lemons, what are we supposed to do? Well, yes. Yes. Um, some of us might save the lemon because we want the lemon zest because we're making a lemon cake. So I'm going to just say right off the bat that here we go into 2019 and life may be ready to serve you up lemons. We're praying for Lee right now uh, because it would seem that there's sadness in the family. You didn't hear the piano today. You didn't hear Lee play the piano. So you're going to have to wait a whole month, right? He's going to be back next month on the second Sabbath. It's what we do here in Santa Clarita. We have a variety if you come on an, any given Sabbath, it may not be like the last one, except potentially if we are doing a series of talks that are linked together. Today was Second Sabbath, and I want you to know I look forward to Second Sabbath. Pete and his crew do a great job of taking some of the songs that we have known a long time and changing them up so that they are new and fresh. I specifically asked Pete to do what he did to the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Now, what he did to it was what he did to it. So if there's any complaints, <clears throat> I'll take them because I asked him. I asked him because this is a song which I'm hoping we can become familiar with again in 2019. So in order to kind of help it to be fresh again, we've given it some different rhythm. We've given it a, a little bit of a different melody there that we're not maybe quite used to. And then Lee needed to be with his family. So you got to come again next month, okay? Uh, not on the, That'll be the second Sabbath, but next week we're going to sing Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus again. And by the way, Please be here looking your absolute best. Get a haircut, uh, put on your best dress, put on your best uh, suit. Um, uh, the conference treasurer is going to be here next week. Okay, uh, end of pleading. Uh, actually, I'm not even scared of him. He's, he is such a great guy, and he is going to be closing out our uh, 10 days of prayer at the end. And, and so Orville Ortiz is going to be with us. By the way, God has been so blessing him. He is, he's, he's almost been like Solomon, the way that he has been able to help this conference in just the last 18, 19 months that I have been here. He has been doing some great things. Pastor Greg, uh, my friend, and your uh, pastor friend told me this week at pastor meetings that some five million dollars have been recovered and or written down by the policies that our treasurer has been putting into place, which translates basically, you need to understand, this conference is under good management. So when you participate in our conference system by tithes, offerings, conference, local church, you are being well taken care of. And I want you to know that this pastor, who, who has been doing this for a number of years, shall I go on record saying this? I guess I should. Not every conference does as well as what we're doing. Okay? So just know that we're uh, very glad for what Pastor or uh, Brother Ortiz is doing, and he will be with us next week. Two weeks ago, we talked about God's resolutions for us. A week ago, we talked about our resolutions for God. So as we jump into 2019, just understand that, that uh, we have this opportunity of this reciprocity back and forth. And God has resolved that he loves you, that he wants you, and that he is going to do everything he possibly can to help you in 2019. You have had the opportunity now in the beginning of the year to make your own resolutions about how you're going to react to that in this relationship that you have with him. So today, uh, I think we can look forward to what might be termed God's preferred future. Okay, 
uh, as God's family, with God as our leader, our, our head of family, I believe that he has a version of 2019 that he prefers. Now, uh, I'm, I'm saying it in this way very specifically because I don't want you to think that you have to, and guess what? He doesn't want you to think that you have to because he definitely takes into consideration human choice. Okay? Lest you think that God is going to ram his agenda in 2019 down your throat just because you want to be in, in his family, think again. He is going to allow for billions of people on planet Earth to make their own decision about whether or not they want to be part of his family, whether or not they want to follow him, and that includes each and every one of us. I believe, though, that he has a personal favorite kind of future that he would like to see us follow. Psalm chapter, Psalm number 138, I believe that this psalm sets the scene for hearing this best case, this, this preferred future from God, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, First of all, you hear David surrender. Now, that's not a word that we necessarily associate with uh, you know, a, a feeling of being a, a good American today. Never surrender. It's what my uh, cousin puts on his blog every time. He, he will give a text, and he, he basically says, never surrender. And he's basically saying never surrender to the, the evil empire. So I'm agreeing with him on that, okay? But our idea of, of winning and our idea of conquering does not include surrender. However, when we talk about our relationship with God and what he would like versus what we would like, what our choice would be as opposed to what his choice would be, David comes up immediately in Psalm chapter 138 and says that he is going to give all my heart. Not going to keep back a piece of it. I'm going to give all my heart. I surrender all. Number two, uh, he recognizes his God is above all other gods. In chapter 138, he is above all other gods. So there is a ranking in our minds as there has been since David that there are other people, there are other systems that are vying for our attention and our affections. And right off the bat, David says, look, I am going to give obedience and I am going to give worship to you as being the God of gods. He bows, number three, he bows, and he recognizes the house. Now, we don't have time today, but just understand that these are metaphors which are very important in the lesson study today, which some of us came and participated in, the Bible study lesson. We're thinking of, of the, the temple and how it had a seven-branch candlestick, and that in the beginning of the book of Revelation, there are seven candles and in the midst of that, you have God, Jesus, standing, and his picture is there in Revelation chapter 1. Read it this afternoon if you haven't in a while. It's a great idea. But David has this whole idea in mind because he says, I want to be part of your house. Now, some dads are old enough here that you may have actually uttered the following words. My house, my rules. David is saying, okay, your house, your rules, I submit. I bow in submission. Your place, your dominion, your rules, I want to be part of your household. The next is name. I want to carry your name with me. I would like your name to be my name. I can't ever get the song John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Schmidt. Oh, if you're German. If you're German, it's Schmidt. Okay, I understand. Okay. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. The, the, the Filipinos in the room are going, whoo! 
So maybe there's a, a really crazy Filipino name. Maybe there's a five syllable long Hispanic name. But then it says, his name is my name too. This is, this is David. David is saying, I want your name, O oh God, to be my name. I would like to be known as part of your family name. Read the third commandment and remember that when you say you're not going to take that name in vain, think wedding. You're not going to have this relationship and have this name and then go out and do stuff that makes that name look bad. That's what that commandment is about. You thought it was just about taking the actual name Jesus Christ in vain, like swearing. No, 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 much more, much more than that. It's sort of like a family name, and you don't want to do anything that's going to make the family look bad. That's what the third commandment is about. Verse 4, may, may, the, may the kings of the earth... Now, now it's getting... A little political here, please don't, please don't worry, I'm going to get my glasses on so I say it right. May the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Now, I, I'm making this very local because I believe that it, here in, in 2019, God is calling us, the God of the past and the God of the future is calling you into the preferred future that he would like. He's calling not demanding, he's calling. He has faith in you. He has hope in you. He is love. And so we can, we can say, okay, the year of our Lord is 2019, the year that we would believe to be part of that part of our eternity when God would come back visually. That's one way to think of the year of our Lord. But what if we had to say, that this is the year that I am going to be part of his family. I'm going to be part of his house. I, I'm going to understand that is part of his house. It's his rules. It's, it's house rules. And that my life will be ordered according to his best future for us. It's our choice to accept this invitation, I believe, to accept his version of 2019. Uh, we, we can say, we want more input, God, in this negotiation. Is it a Do any of you feel like it's potentially a negotiation? <laughs> Do you think his best future for us needs our input? Some of you are saying, yeah, he, he, be he better do what I tell him to do. He, I've got... Okay, let's be honest. We have our lists, right, of things that we would want God to do in 2019 for us. But is that his preferred future for us? We have to say to ourselves, has, has our input into the future of what we would like, has that really worked out for us in 2018? The times we wanted what we wanted and we told God what we wanted and actually at some time he gave us what we wanted and then we realized it really wasn't what we wanted, even though he gave it to us. And if you don't believe me, he has done this before and he's done it even for the children of Israel. They wanted flesh. Remember that one? They're in the midst of the desert and they're tired of eating manna. And in comes a wind and it blows a whole flock of quail off course. Some of those people were so interested in quail, they didn't bother to even cook them. Thousands of people died, maybe of salmonella. I don't know. But they did. By the way, it wasn't just a little bit of quail. It was three feet deep. It snowed quail. Read your Bibles. It's in there. 
God answers our requests at times, but you got to think, is what I am wanting for 2019, should I put that into the negotiation with God, or should I just say, God, you've got a preferred future for me and my family and for our congregation and for our community and and, and for our nation. How can I cooperate? How can I cooperate with that? Maybe, maybe in 2019 we need to consider letting God lead without any interference. May Verse 4, may the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. Verse 5, may they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. I, I want you to know that for me, this is not only a spiritual thing, this is also an economic thing. If we take this to heart, I am hoping that we can be praying that the leadership of our nation, the leadership of our local community, will see who God really is this year. And that that will be seen through people who have accepted him as the leader of their life. And that the way that they treat people will be seen in 2019. I think, it, I, I, I think this, is, this is crucial that we understand that the kings of the earth are not only in other places. They're right here because you see each one of us has a little piece of earth, right? We have a little piece of earth that we call our own. We are kings and queens of that domain. And David is speaking to us, and I think he's also speaking to the larger global economy, and he is saying, may the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. May they come to understand your ways. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. The way that God does things, my friends, is great, and it will prevail. We only have to look at Scripture to, 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 to see that this is true. We, I believe, are the, the kings in our own domain, so before we point fingers anywhere else in this nation, we should humbly bow and realize that God has given us the ability to be in control of that which, again, quoting the commandments, the fourth commandment, that which is within our gates. Yes, yes, we do have gates here at the church, and they are useful. But these are the metaphoric gates that are being talked about in the fourth commandment. Within your sphere of influence, where you are king. Comprendes? All right. Only some of you knew what I said. Okay. Verse 7. Verse 6, David states, even though God is on high, he is paying attention to those who have bowed and accepted him as king. My friends, we do have a God who loves every human being on planet earth, but I am promising you this. I am promising you this not on my authority, but on the authority of the king of heaven that he will be interested in you if you are interested in him. Amen. He calls them the lowly, David does. But that's because they are bowed in submission to the king. Those that are proud that stand back and say, I'm not sure I want to be in relationship with you. I want it my way. The Bible is very clear here in Psalm 138. He is quite a bit further away, further removed, you see, because he is not going to force anyone. That, my friends, is the hallmark of the evil kingdom. Even though you prayed last week for the devil to get out of your life, please understand, he will be back this week trying to pull you away from God who will never force you, who will never push you, who will never make you... Uh, to feel bad about things, but he does not stick as close when you don't want him around. He actually listens to those who tell him to get away. You ever thought about that? He actually listens to them. He steps back and gives them their space 
to do whatever it is that they think that they need to be doing. And that is true in 2018 and it will be true in 2019. Though I walk, David says in verse 7, though I walk in the midst of troubles, you preserve my life. You protect me from my enemies. My friends, if you can testify right now today that in 2018, God protected you. God, God worked things out in your life. If that's your testimony for 2018, then I suggest that as you consider God's preferred future for you in 2019, that you remember that and that he will not not protect you in 2019 just because he took care of you in 2018. He's not tired of doing this. The Bible says his arm is not slack in taking care of his business. He will raise his righteous right arm and protect those who put their trust in him. The Lord, it says, will fulfill his purpose for me. This is verse 8. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Remember what I have said in the past. I'm going to say it again now because I need to hear it. I'm hoping you don't mind hearing it. Love is the way that God does business. If you choose to be part of his family, he is going to love you. And he is going to expect that part of his, as part of his family, you are going to spread that love around. The way that we will do business in 2019 will be according to the family business. And what business is Jesus in? He is in the business of telling everyone in the world, God loves you. God wants you in his kingdom, not just for now, but forever. I said last night to the, the group that, that was gathered in the fireside room to pray, I'm excited about eternity. I'm excited about eternity. The older I get, the more excited I get about eternity because this life is too short. Where are those older people saying amen? Come on now. Come on. When you're 15, <laughs> you think, man, I'm not that old. But let me tell you, get past 50 and you realize this life is short. I'm excited about the fact that because of Jesus, we can look forward regardless of death. We can look forward to eternity. And not just, not just a harp singing on a cloud. No, no. It's going to be endless enjoyment, endless interest, endless uh, uh, communication, endless being together and, and enjoying what, what God has done. It's going to be endless. I mean, it's like, I mean, for those of you who love roller coasters over there, this would be like riding roller coasters for the rest of your life. For whatever it is that you just love doing that you have not yet had enough of in your life, heaven is going to be that times a hundred and it's going to be forever. Do you see why I'm excited about eternity? You see, and if we get excited about this eternity which God is offering us and he's saying, if you accept my preferred future for you, it's going to be eternal. Not just, you know, ends, expires 2019, done. No. That, my friends, is the good news. It always has been. And it's still the good news in 2019. So I, I, I want to end with, with, with David's, David's last little, little jab at God. Did you know that he was jabbing at God? Yeah, yeah. Did you get that right there at the end of 138? Oh, God, don't abandon us. We really like this idea of you having a preferred future for us, and we think the kings of the earth will really get it too if they would pay attention. Don't leave us or forsake us. Don't abandon your handiwork. We are the handiwork of God, my friends. 
He's not going to abandon us in 2019. In fact, that is why we pray fervently, I hope, let this be the year of our Lord, 2019. Amen.